Good day, everyone. Uh, I have just realized I haven't been posting any videos related to nursing. So today, we'll be discussing about my usual routine, being a registered nurse working in a medical surgery field. So I'll try to do this in more detail so you guys will understand more and benefit from how we tackle things, being a more uh, experienced nurse. So I would just like to share how I do things. Just a disclaimer, just, just based on my personal experience and personal preference on most of the things I'm doing right now. Okay, so first thing you have to do, if, of course, you have to go to the nurse's station and you have to check your assignment sheet. Usually they have a prepared sheet within the last hour of their shift and you will know which uh, cases or which patients you'll be taking care of. I usually browse to the patient's data through the EMR or EHR before I start receiving report from the day shift. Because uh, one thing is it helps me do a lot of things. Like number one, I really need to do a med list. Um, in our program, it's kind of old, so you have to write every medication that you have to give. And on part of our task list, we have to write all those things. So that's why on this program, I have to write all of them. Yes, um, it really depends on the program that you're using. If I had a newer program, I really don't have to. I just have to know what are the medications I'll be giving. So I can plan out the medications on how I'm going to give it and how to prepare and schedule my timeline. But if you're a new nurse coming here to the United States, I do suggest coming earlier. At least maybe like 40 to 30 minutes before the start of your shift. The reason for this is you'll be able to read more about your patient and know more about your patient. Uh, this will help you uh, lessen the stress about like not knowing about what to do about the patient or what uh, details that you have to know about the patient. It will really help you a lot. Also, you can browse your medication list, the vital signs. Oh, I check the vital signs as well. So you have to check all those things. Things that I normally do within the middle of the shift. If you're a new nurse, uh, you should be doing this like before so that you'll be more able to adapt well or better. Until such time that you are more adapted to the situation or or if you're able to already manage your time well during the 12-hour shift. And after doing all those things, the next thing I have to do is to prepare myself for the shift. One thing that I normally do first is to have things ready within my like body or within my pockets. Uh, like I want to have like flashes in my pocket, alcohol swab, scissor, ball pen, pencil, uh, er uh, dry eraser marker, pen lights, stethoscope, and micropore, and few more small things. So these are the things I usually have within me, uh, lessening the time where you have to go back and from the patient's room to the uh, nurse's station or supply room. So having those things will really help. Then once I have everything ready, then I'm ready to take the report from the day shift. One important thing about handoff report, make sure that you will be able to see your patient during the handoff report or right after you give a report from one patient. Because you definitely want to make sure that your patient is alive and is on the bed during the handoff report. Uh, and everything else, whatever like lacking with the comes of endorsement or handoff report, they can be doable or achievable on the later on in the shift. Why do I have to make sure that the patient is there during handoff report? I'll give you a few scenarios. Number one, patient could be lying down on the floor without you knowing. Number two, patient could be dead. Okay, that happens. Number three, patient could be missing or already left in the hospital without the day shift nurse knowing. Or number four, patient could be almost uh, falling down on the floor. Then number five, bed alarms are not on on those very high risk patients. Then number six, patients are not hooked to the oxygen and is bluer than blue and a lot more reasons. So everything that happens after you receive a report, that will fall under you, okay? Not the previous shift, but you. So you really have to make sure that you'll be able to see your patient right after you had have a report from the day shift. Most of the time, management will imply that you have to do bedside report. But uh, most likely, we don't really do like really bedside report. We normally do it at the outside of the patient's uh, room. That's where we give a report. Um, mainly because of some privacy issues and things that we want to discuss privately with the day shift or the night shift nurse, or incoming or outgoing nurses. And some of the other nurses would prefer doing report on the nurse's stations. But if you're doing this kind of report, uh, this will be at your own risk. Okay? Like I said, you have to make sure your patients are there in the room and alive. After getting the report from the day shift, the day shift nurse usually hands over the phone that is assigned to you. So make sure that you have that phone with you 24-7 or during the entire 12-hour shift, okay? Because whenever the patient rings out, usually it goes to your tech first. If the tech can't pick up those calls, 
then it will go right through your phone. So you have to have those things. And also if the tech wants to tell you something about the abnormality of the blood pressure or something about the patient, then they can call you directly to your line, okay? Every nurse, every tech, charge nurse, all of them have their own phones that has been programmed and registered. That is set in order for you to take care of your patients, okay? Then after getting all the report from the patient and seeing them uh, one by one, the next thing I will do is go back to those patients. I'll do it one by one. I'll be doing my head-to-toe -to -toe assessment and do things in the bedside that I normally do with the patient. For example, for the assessment, I will listen to the lungs, uh, for the stomach, I'll check for the wound dressing, secure IV lines with tape, uh, call light within reach, uh, check the bed alarms for fall precaution patients, and tell them I'll be back in a while for your medications right after the nurse or the tech checks their blood pressure. This will buy me a little bit more time in order for me to prepare the medications for the entire patients for the roster. Uh, also, I will ask them if they need any PRN medications, particular narcotics, um, especially for those needy patients for pain medications. I will tell them that I have to wait for the blood pressure to be checked before I'll be able to start giving you your PRN medications if they are due. I normally write it down on a paper on a list of my medications to be given to the patient because uh, being a nurse, sometimes you're too busy, sometimes you forget, especially things that you try to remember like it's just a mental note. So I would rather prefer write them on a piece of paper. Then normally for this hospital, we normally start giving our medications at 9 p.m. That's the usual standard time. For example, it's like a twice a day or BID, it's 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. If it's like a QHS or every night, it's usually 9 p.m. Uh, except for those antibiotics, sometimes they have a different uh, timings like 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. But normally it's 9 p.m. Uh, depending on your hospital policy, some will have like allowance of one hour before or one hour after. And I think my previous hospital, we have like two hours before or two hours after. So you better check what's your policy when it comes to giving the medications. So meaning you are allowed to give a medication that's scheduled at 9 p.m., you can give it as early as 8 p.m. or on the later period, not later than 10 p.m. If I finish too early and it's not yet 8 p.m., normally I will try to do some of the documentation, which is part of your task list. In any EMR or EHR program, you normally have a task list or interventional list. This is the list that you have to accomplish within one shift. So like example, this. This is the entire thing is a shift documentation you have to uh, accomplish within your shift. I will discuss this in a different video one by one with details because this is a very, very long discussion and it's nice that to have more explanation of this so that you'll be able to understand the type of documentations that we have here in the United States. They may be different, but most likely they are similar. Like most what the travel nurses say, uh, nursing is the same wherever you go. The thing that differs is the program, the setup, the protocols. Okay? But most of the things like for these documentations, they are virtually the same. Okay? The essence is actually there. No matter what program, Meditech, Cerner, or Epic, this might you might be able to find these documentations on those different programs. So make sure to click the subscribe button in order for you not to miss that discussion. I'll be doing this on this series. Okay? Then a few minutes before 8, I'll start getting the medications for my patient. Depending on the hospital you're working, uh, they have different uh, protocols for this, for getting your medications. For example, in my previous hospital, I'm allowed to get all the medications for my 8 o'clock or 10 p.m. meds. For example, uh, one patient 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, I can get all the medications all together without any problems because it's like their normal routine back there in the hospital. But here in our hospital, we are not allowed to do that. You're only allowed to take one set of medication for one patient. For example, for bed 1, that's the only medication I'll be getting. Okay? So I'm not allowed to get bed 1, bed 2, and bed 3 all together in one go going to the medication room. It is really time consuming doing one things at a time, but rules are rules. You have to follow whatever policy they have in the particular hospital. Then after taking your medication for one patient, example, you have like five medications. You took all of them out and you're ready to go to the patient's bedside to give him the medications. Before you go in, make sure to know the medications that you're giving. Yep, you really have to know those things. Because one of the most embarrassing thing is to give a medication and when the patients ask what this medication is for and you can't really give a proper answer, uh, it is kind of embarrassing, okay? So better save yourself from embarrassment and prepare before you go into the patient's room. So a few major things that you have to know about your medication. Of course, number one, you have to know about the action, the compatibility, and side effects, uh, and other things. 
but mostly these are the three things you have to know. For the side effects, example, uh, never give a blood pressure pill without knowing your patient's blood pressure. Okay? That's really, really basic and really, really a safety measure. Okay? You have to check those things. Or never give any narcotic or any other medication that can cause uh, lowering your blood pressure without knowing your blood pressure. Why? It's because you can kill a patient. Okay, uh, for example, true story. Uh, there's one nurse before that I met. She gave morphine, she gave lisinopril, she gave gabapentin to a patient without knowing the blood pressure. And the patient's blood pressure was like 90 over 50 before giving the medication. So after giving uh, those medications, the patient's blood pressure dropped. It dropped so low that it ended up coding the patient. So because of that incident, the nurse was fired. Okay. I'm not really sure what happened to the patient, but I'm sure the nurse will might lose her license because of this, because she endangered the patient's uh, safety because of like some negligence of not knowing the basic rights or the basic effects of her medications, administration things. That's definitely the reality for us nurses. One wrong mistake and we could kill a patient, we could kill someone. Okay? So we really have to be like on top of our game or know what we are really doing or what we're really administering to patients. Then number two, compatibility. Example, you should be able to know what uh, medications are compatible with your current IV fluids. Uh, like here, example, you're running LR. Uh, some of the medications that you would be giving like IV antibiotic, like uh, I think Zosin or I think Vancomycin, I think they are not compatible with an LR or like tainted ringers. So you have to make sure that they are compatible first before administering them. Uh, here in the US, we have a program that we use in order to check for compatibility. You just have to type in the name of the like fluids. Then you have to type in the name of the medication that you're planning to administer together. Then it will show if it's compatible or incompatible or unknown. Or you can also put in like two medications, IV medications, in order to check if they are compatible to run together. And also you can use this to browse the medication that you'll be giving to get some uh, mechanism, actions, and side effects. So you don't really have to browse the book like what we're doing before. So this program really helps. I will explain more and show you an example uh, next time on the medication uh, explanation or discussion or videos uh, during this series as well. Then before going into the patient's room, make sure you're ready with all the things like the medication gap or if you need a needle, you need a secondary line, primary line, all those things. Make sure you are ready. Preparation and planning is the key for you in able to have a more efficient time management skills. Then once you're in the patient's room, uh, make sure to do or practice the proper protocols. Like check the patient's name, use the uh, scanning, the barcode uh, mechanism, and never override or do things that are not of your or, or part of your protocol. Because breaking the protocol might lead you to having some problems, okay? So better for you to adhere to protocols first. Then if you're trying to explain, try to explain it with confidence as if you never just Googled this like few minutes ago. <laughs> so try to have like, like poker face that you really know what you're talking about. Then once I'm done giving that medication to that particular patient, I will move on and go back to the medication room and start the entire process again. Normally it takes me just less than an hour to give all those medications. And normally I have like a average of five patients per shift here in this particular hospital. Then roughly around 10 p.m., I'll be starting doing my documentations. Like I said, I have to complete uh, the entire task list for this patient, for one patient. So this entire page, I have to accomplish this, this <laughs> within my shift. And this applies to all the patients. One entire this task list uh, for each of these patients. So I have five of these. So while doing these documentations, of course, I'll be bothered with a lot of things like patients call light, patients climbing out of bed, and patients calling for medications for other PRN medications. And sometimes I do have other scheduled medications. So within this time period, there's always like a lot of things that will try to um, get your attention from doing your like task list. So you have to try to accommodate task the documentation as much as you can and just save it afterwards and just get into the patient and go back and do some of the other lists on your task list then if i'm done doing the task list normally i also try to read all the doctor's notes uh review all the how's this the notes that they have placed the orders for that day and i will try to update my cardex or, or the end of shift report 
I'll try to update that. So in order for me to give a better report on day shift, of course, normally for day shift, they're quite busy for a lot of things. So night shift is your role for you to like look up or things that they have missed and like try to jot it down in order for them uh, to be able to accomplish it during the daytime. So day shift and night shift are not really like enemies. They should be working like hand in hand, okay? You have to understand that day shift is a different ball game and night shift is a different ball game. And also during our shift, you have to give the bats for the patients. Uh, usually the techs are assigned for that, but if they have like a bed bound patients, usually they need the help from their nurses. And we also have to encourage them to give bats to those patients. It is your responsibility for that. If patients refuse, then you have to document that they have refused, okay? You really can't force them if they don't want to. Then for night shift, there's not much really medications except for antibiotics for the uh, like around the clock time. Usually the next medications for standard night shift is usually like 6 a.m. There's like a Protonix or Synthroid, those kind of things. Pre-breakfast medications. So except for like I said, like antibiotics, sometimes you can find them at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. or uh, whatever timing they have, particularly those every eight hours or every six hours medications. Normally, before I start giving those medications at 6 in the morning, like in the 4 or 5 a.m., usually I try to make a list and make sure that I'll be able to accomplish all those lists. Uh, lists like example, uh, things that I have to accomplish for this particular patient, like a daily weight, wound dressing, I uh, have to make sure that INOs are like really assist, really accomplished by me and my, by the tech, or I have to check for the like wound dressing daily weights so i have to make sure those are documented properly because if they are not documented properly example if your tech has not documented them then that responsibility falls under you being a registered nurse or being a staff nurse that is still your part of your job okay so you have to make sure that all of those things are accomplished so normally i make a list a small list per like a patient and just cross them out once they're done Speaking of IO, uh, normally for our patients, you have to make sure that they are able to pee within like six to eight hours period. If they have not peed, normally you have to do a few things. Like you might uh, do the bladder scan or encourage them to try to make them pee. And if they still can pee, then you have to proceed for like IO catheter, in and out catheter. You don't really have to get an order for that. But if you need to put a Foley catheter, then you have to get an order for that. It still depends from case to case and it depends on your hospital's protocol. Then on the task list, usually I try to accomplish everything on the task list. I try to not have it like a red mark. Having a red mark means you have not done it or like it's uh, past due. So most of the time I try to clear this, close, clear those out and make sure they're like really ready, like uh, white and ready for the day shift. Okay? So that's one of the things I really want to do being a nurse here in the United States. I really hate seeing red. <laughs> I don't know why. Then if it's 7 a.m. during the hand up report for the day shift, uh, whatever the day shift nurse wants, like her preference or his preference on getting report. Either if he wants it bedside or he wants it like out of the door, outside of the door, I mean, or at the nurse's stations. Whatever he wants, I'll just follow whatever preference you like. Okay, so it doesn't matter because uh, that responsibility falls under him. If something happens to the patients while uh, we're giving report or after we gave report, then that's on him. Okay, so it doesn't really affect me anymore. And after giving a report, I clock out, head back to the car, and go back home to eat my breakfast or slash dinner and take a good rest for the next shift. So that's normally my usual routine uh, working in the medical surgical floor here in the United States. If you guys have any questions or any clarification, please comment down below. I'll try to answer them as much as I can. And make sure to click the like and subscribe button because next time, like I said, I'll be discussing a few more things. The medication administration records or things to how to give medications and about the task list. Uh, I'll try to discuss them in details because this is what you want to learn working here in the United States. Okay? And if you learned something from this video, please click the like button, subscribe button, and please share it to your friends. Again, I'm Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.